Change is essential for your growth and development as a person. And without change, you will be by default staying just where you are and doing things just the way you've ever done them before. So I want to show you three ways to really overcome any self-sabotaging habits. I'm going to give you the three most common ones that might be preventing you from making the positive changes that you want to have in your life. Escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Hey, thanks for being here and joining me for another episode of Screw the Cubicle TV. And if you are new here, I am Lydia Lee. I'm the work and life reinvention strategist, and I help uh, purpose-driven folks just like you to really discover what's really next for the new chapter of life and work. So uh, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell button to be the first to know uh, every single week when I produce a new video uh, and you'll be a part of our insider community here. And I can't wait to share more with you um, in the near future. So today's video is all about three ways to overcome uh, self-sabotaging habits that might be preventing you uh, from making some positive changes in your life and have more about what it is that you may want to reinvent yourself towards in your goals. Now, I want to start this discussion uh, with really talking a little bit more about why you may self-sabotage, right? Um, Self-sabotaging may be behaviors uh, or thoughts that are in your head that might be keeping you away from uh, what you desire most in your life. And really, this place is potentially your subconscious mind, right, that's trying to protect you. Uh, is trying to prevent you from feeling pain <laughs> uh, and that pain of dealing with maybe some deep seated fears that may be that may, may may have been in the way for many many years uh, and it does all sorts of things to really talk you uh, away from actually facing some of those things uh, and I want to share what those common three self-sabotaging habits first uh, or after this uh, but I want you to know that why you you might be self-sabotaging is because it's kind of feels safer to stay put sometimes you know it's not, it's not inspiring but it is feeling safe uh, when we stay put and and I and that's very likely uh, why there might be a lot of things you're doing just to make yourself feel safe uh, change can also really challenge you to deal with, as I mentioned, those deep rooted fears, right? Things about your belief systems, your own self-worth, what you believe you're capable of, like all those things are in the journey of reinvention and change. So if you were to say yes to that, it means facing some of those deep rooted fears. And that could be also another reason why you might be self-sabotaging. Now, any of that sort of resonates with you, um, definitely comment after, uh, below this video and tell me if uh, why you might think you're self-sabotaging yourself with particular behaviors or thoughts in your head uh, that has just been spinning around in circles uh, every single year for you. Please share with us. It's a safe place to share, and I can guarantee you you're not the only one uh, facing some of these things. So one of the uh, first most common uh, self-sabotaging habit is the habit of procrastination. Oh Lordy, uh, this is like my number one, uh, some of my number one power tool sometimes when it comes to self-sabotage. Like I will tell myself all sorts of stories about why I need to wait, why is I'm not ready enough, uh, why the time isn't right. And all of that feels really justified. Can, do you hear yourself doing that too? Or have you felt yourself doing this too? Uh, procrastination is one of the, the biggest things I go for <laughs> when I don't want to do something that feels really difficult, even if it's something that I know I really want as part of my life. Um, and why do we procrastinate? Um, the first thing is that us as humans, we, again, in order to feel safe, right? We always feel the need for certainty. We want to know for sure this is going to work before we take that leap of faith and go out there and get that thing we really want to have, right? We need to feel like we are 100% ready. We've practiced enough. We've done enough. We've proven ourselves enough in order to make any action happen at all. But the truth is the idea of having certainty in your life is such a dream and a fantasy because nothing in life is certain nothing even if someone sells you that they have a hundred percent foolproof plan that you can buy into it's not true because there are so many nuances in change and reinvention so if you only act 
and reinvent yourself. Only when things feel 100%, if not 150%, you will never get to live the life that you truly wanna have. You'll never get to do the work you truly wanna do uh, or include some of the creati creative ideas that you uh, have been mulling about. And instead of embracing, or sorry, needing certainty, I would love to encourage you to embrace exploration without conditions right? What does it feel like to not know where things could potentially bring you to? Like, what if you just actually explore cur your curiosity for certain things that interest you or certain things that have sparked joy uh, or inspiration in your life and just let yourself play with those ideas without the need for it to be a business or for you for the need for you to know for sure if you're going to quit your job or for you to launch something new right away like what if you just create a bit of space without conditions and expectations so that you won't have to procrastinate because you don't need to be certain because the expectation you have for that stage of exploration is just simply the expectation to explore and to scratch some of the itches of curiosity that has been brewing in your mind this power of creating spaciousness in your life to be curious, right? Um, we've done before in our life. Like if you remembered back in maybe your early 20s, we did things like internships before we even knew if we would be a good at a vocation or if we may be successful in a vocation. We spent tons of money in university for like four years, you know, 100 grand of debt sometimes. Uh, and we didn't need certainty then <laughs> to invest in our education because it was sort of the norm, right? Everyone just does it. Um, but the idea of internships is not uncommon in our lives. We've done it in some way, in some capacity before. When you started a new job, right? Very likely you had uh, a three month probation period where you would have to explore and learn and find your positioning in your role uh, to give yourself that space to learn and screw up a little bit in order to be better at the role that you play. So what I mean by creating, spa creating spaciousness, spaciousness for your life to be curious is to also create like what I call self-made internships, right? These are um, sort of like a, a, a beta testing some of the, the interests that you might have in order for you to really feel into uh, being uh, in a different role, taking on a new passion or interest, uh, or really seeing, putting something on for size, right? Uh, to see how you feel when you actually did that without condition, like helped others without needing a business to get started right away to do that. Uh, just put yourself out there uh, to create create that internship to, to become that person and to feel what it feels like to be in that role, right? I've, I've made a video and I'll put it on the cards that will pop up for you uh, on sort of like self-identity um, uh, validating habits, right? So like I talked about like, if you want to be a writer, for example, don't just think about, oh, I can only be a writer if I have launched a book or I'm writing a book. You can be a writer at any time. You can just start writing right now and you will then be a writer right away. You don't need to procrastinate around, around it because you don't have the conditions that are set for certainty, right? The only condition you have is to explore. So where can you create spaciousness in your life? Maybe it's just one day or an hour a week to really just give yourself a self-made internship, right? What would you explore? What would you take on and try for size so that you no longer have to have that self-sabotaging habit of procrastination? All right. The second, um, sorry, self-sabotaging habit that's most common with a lot of people I talk to is the habit of comparison. Now, in the world we live in of social media and sort of like fast-paced news that are in our desktop and our phones, it's so easy to just turn your phone on and really start to compare yourself to other people's version of success, what other people in your industry is doing and what uh, societal expectations are for the kind of life that they think that, that you need to have, right? And when we have access to people's lives in Instagram and social media and all the things, um, it's really easy to get trapped into having some negative self-talk that, oh God, I have to be an extrovert to be able to be successful, or I need to do this kind of business to be successful, or I have to work all the time to be successful, or whatever things that you might have garnered from looking at someone else's life, which is very likely just the positive things that they post, and taking that on and going, I got to be that in order to even gain any change, positive change in my life. And those lim limiting beliefs that you have to be someone different to succeed is very likely keeping you stuck because you are comparing your own journey 
and not staying in your own lane of what's really necessary for you to do next. And also very likely because in the coaching world, other people are trying to sell you their blueprint. Here's how I did it. And if you just did my formula, you will get there too. But we all know that that is too good to be true, right? If that formula worked for everybody, then this person really doesn't need to work at all. They're probably millionaires, you know, uh, and they, they, they have hit the gold mine. But the truth is that everybody's different. You have nuance in what you need uh, in your version of success, in what is right for you to do, what, what, is, what is happiness on your own terms. And when you take on other people's blueprint for success, you'll just really never get there and it'll make you feel worse about yourself. So really seek out self-awareness, right? Turn off some of that social media if that feels like it's seeping into your life and it's causing negative reactions right now. You can turn it back on when you maybe have created a bit of balance in that for yourself. It's okay to take a pause from distraction and noise in the outside world and external validation and start to really look at your own strengths, really look at what it is that you want to build and design in your life that's, that matters to you, that you know there's a purpose for doing it. There's, a, there, there's something worthwhile for you to actually be building for yourself and your deep why and that deep knowledge for yourself and that meaning behind your actions is going to get you to your goals a lot faster because it's your plan your own blueprint and you're less likely going to fall for any traps of like the quick and easy paths uh, that are too good to be true and it builds a much more healthier relationship with self where you can actually focus on more positive things that you want to leverage in yourself and there's no need to compare yourself because your journey and your lane is different and your stage of change is different and how you want to reinvent could be different um, and, and gaining that time for self-awareness is going to be super important uh, to really make big changes in your life. And then lastly, the self-sabotaging habit lots of people have when going through a reinvention is the habit of perfectionism. Again, very tied to the first habit of procrastination. Uh, procrastination usually brew perfectionism. Uh, and for all of you who are like me, who are like type A high achievers that have actually in a way gotten to where they've gotten to because they've been perfectionists. You've been rewarded in the past because you've been uh, so good at what you do uh, and you have overthought what you've done and really showed up in your best version. And that's all really, really good. But very likely that if you have been spinning in perfectionism where you don't make any moves, where nothing has changed, where you keep thinking about these amazing ideas that you have to change your life or your work, and you just never go after it because it just doesn't feel is enough yet. It doesn't feel like you're ready enough. You're not worthy yet to do that. Um, very likely you're selling yourself short. And here's the thing. Anytime you start to change your identity, which is what happens in a reinvention, you start to change what you, you know, have boundaries on. You start to change who you become for other people. You start to say, hey, I used to do that. I can do that, but I no longer feel called to do that. And so I don't want to do that anymore. And so when you change that sort of sense of identity, who you are, who you want to become, it's very natural to sort of feel like, oh God, I've got to learn more in order to show up as this new version of myself. And very likely, like I said, you're selling yourself short. So I want you to know today that what you know and are capable of right now is enough to get started. Because as you grow your capacity to lead, as you grow uh, your own body of work, as you grow yourself as a human, you will have to start to actually put things out there, right? You start to ship your ideas a lot faster than you think in order to really see how you navigate some of those changes and what you grow into and how you grow into. You can't really grow unless you're doing something different. And for you to be able to do something different now, you can't wait to be perfect because imperfect action and your incremental effort is what gets you to your goals faster. Perfectionism is one of those um, you know, things that sometimes can be masked as like, oh, you know what? I just really want to do good work. I just want to make sure that what I'm putting out there is meaningful. And that is totally true. But I want you to challenge yourself to, to say, when does that become too much, right? When am I really using that mask of perfectionism as just doing better work uh, or, you know, like being better? 
as something that's keeping me stuck to actually learn more about what I'm capable of by just doing something small and imperfectly, right? Where are those areas that might be happening in your life that you have maybe stopped shipping, like you haven't wrote that blog that you've been writing, wanting to write, uh, you haven't launched that website uh, because it's not good enough yet, right? Or you haven't even maybe talked to friends and family, a family about what you're passionate about or interested in because you haven't really have something to show for it just yet. Like have those things really happen in your life? And if they have, very likely you're stuck in the self-sabotaging habit or perfectionism. So think about an imperfect action. Challenge yourself to make a change in the smallest way possible to build your resilience and your confidence for bigger change in the future. What is a small imperfect action that you can do today that's going to start to wean down your perfectionism uh, tendencies and really get your ideas out there a lot sooner? Now, if any of those uh, three common self-sabotaging habits resonates very powerfully for you, please share with me an example of how you might be doing that to yourself. Whether it's perfectionism, comparison, or procrastination, um, I would love to hear your story. Uh, and again, know that you're not alone. And know that all of this I have also gone through and continue to go through uh, in my own journey of reinvention. Thank you so very much for joining me today. And if this video hit a note for you, don't forget to share it with others that might benefit from this video. Uh, and as usual, I love hearing more about what I can support you on. So if you have a burning question, a video topic you would love for me to consider uh, for upcoming videos, please share with me in the comments below. Thanks so much for joining me.